Okay, so in this video, we want to discuss the idea of classifying critical points of a function when the critical points are of the first type. So critical points where the derivative of the function is equal to zero. So we've already discussed that critical points are very important points when it comes to sketching a graph of a function. Because at those points, the function may change from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. And when we say classifying critical points, all we mean is that we have to figure out what does the function look like at any given critical point. Now we will focus in this video on the first type of critical points. Again, critical points where the derivative is equal to zero. We know that there is a second type of critical points where the derivative could be undefined, but those are a little bit more tricky, so we will look at them through examples. But the first type of critical points where the derivative at the point is zero are fairly easy to figure out. And as we're about to see, there are four possibilities. The first two, very simple. The other two, a little bit more interesting, but also fairly simple. So let's look at the first two cases. We'll do them side by side because they are extremely similar. So we have a point in each case x0 at which the derivative of the function is equal to 0. Well, if the derivative at a point is equal to 0, that means that the slope of the function at this point is equal to 0, but the slope of a function is the slope of its tangent line. And if the slope is 0, this means we have a horizontal tangent line. So, so far, so good. Now, how do we know what the function looks like around the point x0? Well, we already have half of it. We know that at this point, since the derivative is 0, the curve is flat, therefore has a horizontal tangent line. But how do we figure out the shape of the function around this point? And the answer is to simply use the second derivative. So what if we evaluate the second derivative of our function at the point x0? Well, the first two possibilities are that the second derivative at the point could be positive, or it could be negative. Well, if the second derivative at x0 is positive, then around this point the curve is necessarily concave up, and there is only one way for a curve to be concave up around a point, and also flat at this point. The curve has to look like this. And again, if you notice, we can make another observation. At a point, x0, where the curve is flat because the derivative is equal to 0, but where the second derivative is positive, then at this point, the function around the point x0 attains its smallest y value. So we call such a point a local minimum of the function. And local means just around the point x0, because of course, later on, the function could then be decreasing and attain an even smaller y value. But as long as we stay around the point x0, at this point, the function does attain its smallest y value. Well, we will have a very similar picture when the slope of the function is 0, but the second derivative at the critical point is negative, because we know that if we have a negative second derivative, then the curve at this point and around this point is concave down. And there is only one way to draw a function at a point that is both concave down around the point and flat. It has to look like this. And you can see now that Around the point x0, if we stay close to x0, 
the function attains its largest y value at x0. So this will now be called a local maximum. And again, local means that the function attains its maximum value, but only around the point x0. Because if we move away from x0, the function could then increase to an even larger y value. But as long as we stay close to x0, at x0 the function does attain a maximum y value. So those are your best case scenarios. A critical point where the derivative is 0, so a point where the curve is flat, and if the second derivative at x0 is positive, then the curve is concave up at this point and flat. If the second derivative is negative at x0, then the curve is concave down and flat at this point. In one case we have a local minimum, in the other a local maximum. But what if this fails? So what if we have now a critical point x0 where the derivative is equal to 0, and the second derivative is also equal to 0. Now we have the first, the same first step as we had previously for the other two cases. These are again values of x at which the derivative is equal to 0. So at those two points, in each case the curve is flat, so it has a horizontal tangent line. And now we assume that our classification at x0 fails, which means that at x0 we have a second derivative that is equal to 0. And when the second derivative at a point is equal to 0, it tells us nothing about the concavity of the function. If the second derivative is positive, the curve is concave up. If the second derivative is negative, the curve is concave down. But if the second derivative is 0, we don't know if the curve is concave up or concave down. So when the classification fails at the exact critical point, then all we have to do is look at the second derivative at a point a little to the right, say x0 plus, any point a little to the left, say x0 minus. And any value will do as long as it's close enough to x0. And let's see what are the two possibilities. Well, there are actually four possibilities, but two of them are the same as the first two. So what if we evaluate the second derivative now at both the point a little bigger than x0 and the point a little smaller than x0? Well, of course, the second derivative at both points could be positive and therefore concave up on both sides, and so we're right back to our very first case. We could also have the second case. What if the second derivative at a point a little smaller than x0 and a little bigger than x0 are both negative? Then the curve is concave down on the left and on the right of x0. And so we're right back down to our second case. So the only two new cases will be when the sign of the second derivative changes from the left of x0 to the right of x0. So the first possibility is that we have a positive second derivative on the left of x0 and a negative second derivative on the right of x0. This means that on the left of x0, the curve is concave up, and on the right of x0, the curve is concave down. And we also know that at x0, since the derivative is equal to 0, 
the curve is flat. So there's only one option. On the left of our critical point, we have a concave up curve. On the right, concave down. And at this point, the curve is flat. So the only option is to look like this. Concave up. Then at the point, it becomes flat. Then it changes to concave down. So you can see that in this case, this is now not only a critical point, but also an inflection point. Not only is the curve flat at this point, but concavity does change from concave up to concave down. And of course, we could have the exact mirror image. The second derivative at a point smaller than x0 could be negative, And at a point larger than x0 could be positive which means that the curve is flat at x0, concave down on the left of it, and concave up on the right of it. So the only option is for the curve to look like this. Concave down on the left of x0, flat at x0, and then on the right of x0 the curve becomes concave up. And once again, x0 is not only an inflection, a critical point, but also an inflection point as the curve goes from concave down and then going through x0 becomes concave up. And so this is how you figure out how the graph of a function looks like around a critical point at which the first derivative is equal to 0. The two simpler cases is when the second derivative at the critical point is positive or negative, in which case you get either a local minimum or local maximum, a little bit more work is required if at the critical point the second derivative is equal to zero, in which case all you have to do is again use the second derivative at a point a little to the left of x0 and then a little to the right. And this will tell you on each side whether the curve is concave up or concave down. And this is how you can use the second derivative to figure out what the function looks like around any critical point where the derivative is equal to zero. And that's it.